the museum is an educational medium and people go to museums to learn. To explain better this statement, it might be useful to list the definitions of education on the Oxford Dictionaries. First, the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction. And second, an enlightening experience. Educating people means to develop their capabilities and make them acquire new knowledge by using pedagogical methods. Who is in charge of educating someone actively accompanies him throughout the learning process, leading him to a more developed critical thinking. This is the role of museums, to increase people's curiosity and desire of learning, providing them with the right tools. Education within museums acts on several fronts. First of all, museums should conduct serious and scientific researches on their collections. Only by studying the artworks and artifacts it would be possible to communicate their history, meaning and social value to the public in the most effective way. Museums should not be only warehouses for valuable objects, but they should become research centers, tightening relationships with the international cultural panorama. Secondly, the museum researchers have not only to focus on the collections, but they should also concentrate on the educational and communication strategies in order to share with the public the scientific results. Museum pedagogy and museum education are fields of study devoted to the development of educational activities within museums, aiming at engaging visitors and enhancing their curiosity. Finally, the museum is an educational center teaching to the public about history, art, archaeology and culture in general. Let's now define in more detail by whom this public is composed. The majority of the current definitions of museums places the public at the center of the scene. Museums were originally intended only for scholars and experts and it is a quite recent goal to place all the population at the core of museums' activities and outcomes. We have to keep in mind that this public can be largely heterogeneous, with different backgrounds, different capabilities and different learning needs. To be more specific, which are, generally speaking, the main types of public? First, experts which are academics and researchers. Second, adult visitors. Third, teenagers visitors. Fourth, children visitors. The museums should enhance the quality of the visit experience for all these groups by designing slightly differentiated paths with different learning outcomes, in order to be responsive to the visitors' different needs. For the experts, the aim would be that of facilitating academic research and of creating in-depth paths. For adult visitors, generally not experts of the themes exposed in the exhibition, learning is reached by means of a bit of entertainment and trusted sources of information. For teenagers, museums should make an effort to address them in the right way. In fact, they are a very difficult target group. Several pedagogical studies have highlighted the importance of shaping participatory methods in order to engage this type of public. For children, an entertaining education is very important. Therefore, museums should design educational and recreational paths for them, keeping in mind that children are facilitated in learning when they actively participate in a cultural experience. For example, students can learn about the job of the archaeologists by doing simulate dig or by touching and using artifact replicas. Many museums and institutions have already employed these methods for a long time with success. We must never forget the importance to captivate and interest the young generations as they are the future adults. In this way, Museums and cultural institutions can make their part in the creation of aware citizens, aware of their own cultural and social identity, aware of the fact that the cultural heritage is everyone's property and for this reason must be accessible and available to everyone. For the same reason, a continuous cooperation between museums and schools is desirable. These two institutions share some essential aims developing critical thinking and providing a safe and intriguing learning environment. In the museums, students can look at the objects or artworks and ask questions about what they see. 
Indeed, as some recent studies have proved, using the object or work of art as the focus of inquiry, students actively engage in critical thinking, communication and problem solving. It is not simple for the museum operators to define which would be the best teaching strategy or communication method. According to John Falk and Lynn Dirking, there are four key factors determining the museum experience. First, the personal context, meaning the interests, knowledge and motivation of the visitor. Second, the sociocultural context. Third, the physical context. Fourth, the events and experiences outside the museum. Anyway, there are some conditions which facilitate learning, regardless of the personal and sociocultural context of the visitors. To create stress-free situations which allow visitors to stay in a play mode. To create and maintain the visitor's motivation and attention along the entire exhibition path. To present the topic of the exhibition in a proper way. To create teaching materials suitable for different types of target audience, to outline precise objectives for the exhibition, to combine the aims of the exhibition and the visitor's learning needs. The exhibition team should test the visitor's learning needs according to observation, interviews and visitor questionnaires. According to a study carried out by the Tate Gallery in London, some factors generally obstacle a positive learning experience too much confusion in the written instructions and panels, too difficult language, too long and tiring activities. A very good teaching strategy that allows to extend the learning time even beyond the visit to the museum is the exhibitions or museums catalogue. In Italy, the idea of the catalogue was born in the second half of the 20th century. Before that time, the catalogues were very short and economic booklets, only containing essential information on the artworks. Nowadays, at the entrance or exit of an exhibition, the public can have volumes with a good scientific apparatus and beautiful illustrations to a quite a cheap price. Summing up, the educational role of museums can be resumed in these points. Scientific research on the museum's collections with a synergy between museums, universities and research centers continuous study on the best educational methods to address to a wide and heterogeneous public, communication of the contents to the public paying attention to the different target groups. There are some conditions facilitating the conveying of knowledge, such as to create motivation, to present the contents in the proper way, avoiding difficult language and confusing panels, to create activities, not long and tiring, suitable for different types of public, and so on. Educating people is a continuous, difficult, but also stimulating challenge, and museums have the duty to reach this goal.